Good day and welcome to Turning Your Cruising Dreams into Reality podcast. I'm Jackie Parry and it's good to have your company. Today I'd like to share our story of finding our next boat. But this one's a little different as the boat we were searching for was a barge in the glorious European canals. This episode is brought to you by Pantenius Yacht Insurance. So let's go on a journey to find a Dutch barge in France with an Aussie. Frankly, I wouldn't take one of those boats if they were giving them away. Our first search for a barge in the European canals was not going well. A few years ago, we had traversed the French canals, south to north, on our sailboat, Mariah 2. Her five-foot keel had caused some, let's say, interesting events in the locks, when the tidal wave of water had rolled in via exuberant lockings. We had planned to return one day on a boat better suited. Thirteen years later, we were back in Europe, searching for a barge. We commenced the hunt in the UK, which was ridiculous. Convert Australian dollars to British pounds. It hurts. Aside from that, the boats in our price range, actually quite a bit above our price range, needed everything doing to them, except perhaps a new hull. And even that was questionable. As usual, when making a hefty purchase, we had carried out months of research online first. The advice was, head to Holland, the boats are better and cheaper. We have wonderful friends in Petten, which is North Holland, so it was an easy decision to head in that direction. We never keep to a straightforward plan, though, so we stopped in France first en route to Holland from London, just to see one boat, which was calling us. However, that boat was badly presented, with dead batteries and no lights. I think the engine is in here somewhere. We weren't that impressed. The broker wasn't that interested either, so we headed off to Holland. Natasha and Dennis and their gorgeous girls, Debbie and Kim, had been friends for years. We met them in the Canary Islands and spent part of our adventure in the Great Loop in the USA with them. We hadn't seen them for a long time, and I knew they'd laugh at my grey hair that was staging a takeover bid. I knew they would tell us off by wasting money by going to France. I also knew they'd straighten us out and put us on the right track. I was right, and they even loaned us their camper van. Suddenly, we stepped into the nitty-gritty of boats. Tall ones, short ones... Long, fat, thin, smelly, smart, expensive and cheap. Boats, glorious boats. We were looking for a good-sized boat for two, with two cabins for occasional visitors to have their own space, and a well-maintained engine that was big enough to push us along nicely. Sails would have been nice, but I think we were asking too much with lowering the mast regularly for all the bridges. We wanted a good wheelhouse that provided protection from the elements. What we didn't want was teak decks, rust, a toilet in the galley, a diesel eater, and we certainly didn't want concrete in the bilge. We learned something new on every boat we viewed. Spring put on a fabulous show with clear skies and sunny days. The blooming tulips spread like a rainbow over the meadows. Soft pinks, deep purples, glowing yellows and flame reds. Across the flat land, windmills gently turned in the lazy breeze. The Dutch couldn't build an ugly house if they tried. We became keen on a 13-metre motorboat. That is, until the seller lied to us about the asbestos around the exhaust. While it wasn't a disaster, we no longer trusted what he said. While searching for our boat, we awoke each morning with fresh excitement. Was this the day we find our boat? 
One morning, with sleepy eyes, I opened up our emails to see what was occurring in the world. And this particular morning, something made me sit up straight. I read out loud. Your bid for the Val Cruiser of so many dollars has not been accepted. Keep trying. Suddenly, I was wide awake, glaring at Noel, who was trying to hide behind his teacup. The next day, we received another email. You can come to view the ferry this afternoon if you'd like. Ferry? Ferry? I know I said I wanted more room, but a ferry? My thoughts turned to internet blocking software to contain Noel's enthusiasm. One which had a maturity level, perhaps. The weeks rolled by and we became dispirited with our lack of excitement with the boats on offer. Maybe we didn't have the right budget, but we were determined to stick with it. However, patience was thinning. We went from... Ah, this is nice, dear, travelling through Holland, looking at boats. Everything is very pretty, isn't it? Two. Just where the furk is this bloody turn-off? That bloody boat was a heap of shite. And look at this, another bloody suicide, bloody wanker on a push bike, demanding right of bloody way on a bloody furkin' roundabout. <coughs> we read every boat advert in Europe. When I found an interesting boat with just one out-of-focus picture, I couldn't help responding to the ad with, Why are you advertising a boat to sell without pictures? Then I wondered why they didn't write back. I tell you, the wine cellar was depleting at rather an alarming rate. But the Dutch were very forgiving, especially with our steady speed in the camper van, and we had only one horn-blowing, arm-shaking incident. Well, we did nearly cut him in half. Noel had trouble differentiating between the wiper and the blinker toggle. It was raining off and on. The road user thought we were going to port, when in actual fact, had he cared to look and listen, our Tom Tom was broadcasting a rather urgent shriek for starboard. Struth. On a positive note, trying to learn the lingo was a great way to clear any gunk from the back of your throat. Amid this mayhem, we put an offer on a boat. A 23-metre hulk of a boat. To cut a rather long, boring and upsetting story short, we agreed a fabulous price. They agreed to let us move on until the survey. While starting to make ourselves at home, we found the concrete in the bilge. The concrete that they swore was not there. We pulled from the deal and thankfully received our deposit back in full. Another boat caught our eye at the same time. The owners were delightful, but had not kept up the maintenance. During numerous discussions with the broker, he unwittingly let slip details of the state of the hull. We had by now seen a few people get caught with having to replate. Steel hulls thin over time and the replating exercise can be vastly expensive. During in-depth discussion with this broker, he pretty much talked us out of the deal, hinting at probable hull thickness problems. So that was two near misses, and nothing else was appealing, not without an enormous increase in our budget, which we didn't have. We had been bouncing around figures via the broker of the French boat, while all this was going on. There was something about her. We put in an incredibly low offer and just let it sit. After the concrete in the bilge debacle, we looked back again at photos of the boats we'd have previously viewed. You know, that boat in France is pretty. Hmm, yeah, she has got nice lines. We studied the pictures talked about the renovations we could do, as she had a poor design below decks with sleeping arrangements. We still couldn't see the engine, but the dark, smudged photos didn't look too bad second time around. We can talk ourselves into anything. The owners of this French boat had turned down our low offer, twice. Our options were running out, 
so we upped the offer a little, subject to survey. By some miracle they accepted, and so we were on our way to France once again. We couldn't haul out for several weeks. The nearest place to go on the hard at the soonest time was where the broker lived, some 280 kilometres away from where the boat was currently situated. The owner wanted to take his boat there anyway, so we commence a 280 kilometre test run, complete with 87 locks with the owners. Ignoring the fact that both Noel and I are not good at living with family, let alone strangers, we started to practice our French. Le iceberg. Le pointy end. Merd. We thought that would be useful. Plus, Noel had a few German words he could throw in just to confuse me, or them, or perhaps everyone. At least we knew the important words. Je voudrais du vin blanc and bière, s'il vous plaît. The owners were sweet people, extremely gracious to invite us on board, and trusting too. However, they believed we should have been fluent in French within two days. If we didn't understand their rapid-fire French, they'd come in close, face to face, and shout into our somewhat startled faces. Important aspects of the boat, like start-up procedures and central heating functions, were ignored. But detailed training sessions on how to stow the cushions in the cupboard and clean the floor were a daily event. My patience became gossamer thin when I was told I was cutting potatoes the wrong way. Upon arrival into St. Jean de Lone, we booked into a gite, which is a self-contained apartment. The boat went like a dream. The survey went very well despite the surveyor being dressed like a teenager ready to go skateboarding. He was thorough with the boat, but left us a bit perplexed with some answers to our questions. Uh, what paint do you recommend for the hull? Noel asked. The surveyor straightened his spine, rolled back his head, looked straight down his nose and replied, I do not know. I am not a painter, no? Some expert. That said, he did find the slop in the rudder bearings and shaft, resulting in a new prop shaft and bearings. We were thinking it was just a worn keyway. We didn't know anything about a new prop shaft until it was ordered. We were only the purchasers after all. Fortunately, the people we were buying the boat from were paying for most of the work, as per the contract, so we didn't have too much of a heart attack. The prop was enormous at 80 centimetres and it took two men to lift the shaft. What we didn't bank on, though, was the Band Aid style cover on the inside of the hull where the prop shaft went. It was covered while we sat back in the water waiting for the new prop shaft to be made and delivered. And what happened next was rather like a stressful carry-on movie. We were not happy with the temporary patch covering the rather large hole and asked the workers not to let the water into the dry dock to refloat the boat. They thought this type of patching was fine. We couldn't understand why a huge hole in a boat would be patched from the inside with the water pressure doing everything it could to push the patch off. They opened the lock to let the water in. Noel closed it. Tempers were fraying. Noel was grasping the latch to prevent the water entering. Then the owner turned up, tapped an emergency switch and the dry lock filled. Needless to say, the temporary repairs were fine after some adjustments at our insistence. Our frantic behaviour and the fact that we locked an engineer who monitored the patch in our engine room for half an hour without realising it were all forgiven. The French way is very different from what we are used to. But we were exhausted and through lack of energy, we finally relaxed and allowed ourselves to just go with it and things improved. With the surveyor's report in our sticky hands, the insurance in place, the funds transferred and all the owner's gear removed, we sat on our lovely home all alone 
and wondered how the hell we were going to manoeuvre an 18 and a half metre boat through the middle of France. I hope you enjoyed our adventure in France. It's one of my many amazing memories and I feel privileged to have had this experience. Stay tuned as the next story is about our first adventure along the canals in our new home. If you'd like to read this story, go on over to sistershiptraining.com and click on articles. I've included details of our boat and many more cruising tips. On sistershiptraining.com you'll find more podcasts, videos and articles and our subscribe button. That's all we've got time for today. My name is Jackie Parry and it's been good to have your company. If you want more great tips and advice, head along to Turning Your Cruising Dreams Into Reality Facebook group. And I'll catch up with you again soon. I wish you safe sailing.